Hey family, Naisha back on with another video and this word is so needed. The whole Bible is needed. A whole relationship with God is needed. And just like the good father that he is, he provides and he comes with it right on time. I'm not sure what the um, the title of this video is going to be yet, but the message is peace. Now, again, when I speak, I have to only speak from what I know, what I've experienced, what he's shared with me. I can't speak from hypotheticals, from somebody else's point of view, somebody else's story, sermon, service. I can only speak from what he has given me and granted me my portion to speak from. This word is about peace. Now, there's been a lot of controversy about peace forever. And again, everything that God says, the world automatically, automatically, it automatically defies him, resists him goes against him so i'm not gonna ramble on any further i'm gonna just give it to you how he gave it to me and we're gonna go down we're gonna break it on down just like he gave it to me so this word is coming out of luke 49 no <laughs> luke 12 49 through 53 yeah i have to change that part <laughs> Luke 12, 49 through 53. All right. And it reads. The title of it, I'm reading out of the NLT. Jesus calls division. I have come to set the world on fire. And I wish it were already burning. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me. And I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Now, how is the Prince of Peace, which he is referred to in... Isaiah 9 6 we know that Jesus is also he's he's a, a savior of many many names Prince of Peace is also one of his names how is he the Prince of Peace but in Luke 12 verses 51 he says do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth no I have come to divide people against each other how is the Prince of Peace telling us he did not come to bring peace God is good okay praise him in advance God is good this is what he gave me he didn't come to bring peace to the world but to me for the world is the world and though I'm not of this world I'm still in it he came to bring peace while on my journey in this peaceless world prince of peace the peace he gives the world cannot give Isaiah 49, again, he is referred to a savior of many names, the Prince of Peace. Let's define this word peace. Peace is freedom from civil disturbance. Now, there are many definitions of this in the dictionary. Me personally, I have the Merriam-Webster dictionary downloaded on my phone because don't we all have a dictionary? Just me? Okay. But this word peace this is the the definition he highlighted to me as i search for this word peace freedom from civil disturbance what is the what what is the biggest thing this world is trying to do acquire peace why this world is corrupted. Jesus said, I have come to set the world on fire and I wish you were already burning. He didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring it to us. 
so that while we're in this world, we will have peace. It goes down to say, in John 14, God is so good. God is so good. Praise him now. Jesus is so good. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you. Like, we didn't, I, I would never be able to understand God's love until I'm with him. But he has given me the spirit so that each day, each minute, each second, that I can get a glimpse of his love. Like, wow. So I can just only imagine what heaven is like. Whew. In John 14, you see, John 14 and 27, he brought us a gift. He said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a, pe is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember that I told you I am going away, but I will come back to you again. 27, let's read 27. And 28 this is John 14 27 and John 14 and 27 I am leaving you with the gift peace of mind and heart and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give why is the world trying to offer this civilization when it cannot and why can't it the world is corrupted since the beginning from when Adam and Eve sinned that's when the world became corrupted that's why he said I've come to set the world on fire and I wish it was already burning because he is sick of it he's sick of it he's sick of the sin he's sick of it Ooh. for our savior to say I wish it was already burning now a person reading that with their carnal mind will look at it like, why he want it burning? We hear it. Because you're thinking with a worldly mind. And and going on further into John 17 and 14. God is so good. God is so good. Praise him now. He say, I wish it were already burning. So what do that mean? He wished the world was already burning. Because once sin came into the world, it corrupted his original design. It's like, it's like if you are an artist, which God is the author, finisher, creator. If you are an artist and you have, you're drawing a Picasso and somebody comes and like, just, um, like you have this beautiful, vibrant picture and somebody comes with some black paint and they just draw a whole just black streak through it. It then ruined your whole creation. Now let's let, let's put these things into perspective when we when we're when we're listening to what our savior is saying. He's not saying, "Oh, I wish y'all was burning with it." I mean, he accomplished that purpose as far as when he sent the flood waters onto the earth with Noah uh, because people were giving it to their sin, much like today, giving it to their sin, doing whatever they wanted, not acknowledging him. But he put the rainbow in the sky as his covenant with us to never ever send flood waters onto the earth again to destroy humans to destroy it because before what god did he he did he just said you know what i'm sick of this just i'm gonna start it over but oh thank you god oh my jesus lord but god he saw fit because Noah had found favor with the Lord. So he blessed them again. He blessed Adam and Eve when he told them, be fruitful and multiply. And what did he say with Noah after he after he wiped out of all of creation before? What did he say to Noah? What was the first commandment he gave them? Again, be fruitful and multiply. Now this is a little different because when he sent Jesus into the world, this is why did he tell him to be fruitful and multiply? Listen, when God first created Adam, he didn't tell him to be fruitful and multiply because how could he have been fruitful and multiplied because that wasn't his original purpose for him to be fruitful and multiply. His original purpose for him was to cultivate the land because the first man came from God. So Noah, though he found favor with the Lord, he still was in the bloodline of man. So he had to bring his, his, his himself, bring his son into the world to accomplish the purpose of which the law was made. John 14, John 17 and 14, John 17 and 14 reads, 
I have given them your word and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. Just as I do not belong to the world, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Why is the world trying to fight for a civilization and peace and all of this when God himself did not come to bring peace to this world? It's, it was already messed up. But he came so that his creation may have peace in the world. Peace of mind and heart. Look what he said. He said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. I'm not asking you for that. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. But to keep them safe. And how do you keep us safe? By giving us a gift of peace for mind and heart. Because though this is what it means, though we are here, like he like he told me earlier, he said, I'm he said, I came to bring you peace while on your journey in this peaceless world. So though this world is not peaceful, I came to bring you peace because I care for you. He don't care about this world. We see how we see how Jesus feels we see how our creator feels about this world we see how he feels about this world how our savior feels about this world and john and john luke and luke 12 he said he said i wish i wish it was already burning this is what he said let's go back he said i have come to set the world on fire and i wish it were already burning he don't care about this world why are we trying to save the world he don't it's gonna burn up it's gonna be set on fire it's gonna be set on fire he don't care about this world but he cares about his creation that is in this world because though we are in it we're not of it just like he was not of it okay god is so good and our father is not the author of confusion so when it say but but jesus is the prince of peace so he do want us to uh bring peace in the world have peace in, wait help me lord help me lord give it to me the way you gave it to me let me say it the way you gave it to me let me say it the way you said it to me he said i am not the author of confusion yes i am the prince of peace but this world is not a peaceful place. I'm the prince of peace, but this world is not a peaceful place. I'm the prince of peace, but I don't care about peace in the world. I care about peace in you. And this world cannot give you peace. A tranquil vacation on an island surrounded by coconuts and palm trees and, and all of that cannot bring you peace. The peace that he gives, the world cannot give. He's never the author of confusion. When he says something, it's, it's literally, God is so good. Because, Thank you, Jesus. The reason why we are confused about things in this life is because when God says something, the world's natural reaction is to oppose it. That's the world's natural reaction is to oppose it. So that's where confusion comes in. So when I know, cause this was, this was me and this is me laying it down right now. I couldn't understand how are you called the Prince of Peace, but this world is not peaceful. It doesn't make sense. And I thought that so long ago. That just lets us know, lets us know let me know that God, he don't forget, he don't forget a prayer. He don't forget a thought you had. He don't forget a question you asked. Even if you don't get that answer right when you think you should get it or right in that moment, best believe, y'all. Best believe. He ain't forgot, but he know for everything there is a time, just like in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes has really been a highlight today. There's a time to be happy. And there's a time to be sad. There's a time for joy. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. And there's a time to sing. There's a time for everything under the sun. Maybe when I was asking, and I know maybe when I was asking, I wasn't ready to receive what he was saying. But best, but know this, our Father who art in heaven is not 
the author of confusion. If you have a question, you ask it. And you ask it again. And you ask it again. Ask and you shall receive. You ask over and over and over. And he will grant you your answer. He will grant it to you. Because this is what he tells us. Ask and you shall receive. Ask for his peace. Just like in 1 Corinthians 14.33 it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And what is peace again? Peace is freedom from civil disturbance. Another definition is a state of being. Like it's just a state where you are. It's not something that you can go to and pay this much money for. It's a gift that the world cannot give. The world cannot give it. The world cannot give it. God is so good. He is so good. I don't think he wants me to say anything else. He is so good. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This was so good. This was so needed. This was so on time. God is so good and always on time. You ain't got to worry about having to watch with God because he... When he show up, he shows up and he shows out. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.